with an understandable and inevitable, inevitable eventuality of this, the Reverend Sir Henry Reed was eventually invited to the part of his court towards Native American Indians in 1864. Only a minor instance of where in which the Northern Park in Tamadwaz fostered the causes of those with a determined path, be that path artistic, fanatically bound, or religious. From the late 15th century, the grounds were wellspring of fortune. and discontent stalked the land of British Army like never before or since. Diverse splits in the order established 400 years before, we were finally beginning to be outstanding to the casual eye. The people recognised the folly and the precepts that the king had a divine right to rule. Even the execution of Guy Thorpe amid the, that year highlighted this fact. Amongst the throng and fervour of all this distraction, was needed, perhaps the start of a prolonged distraction which would lead England into a new career of worry and fraught paranoia. A state of mind which still resides to this day, together with most of the colonies, fostered during that rule of empire that history now regrets. Distraction came in the form of new towns spilling into the country like rats out of the nest of the Black Death. Towns about which we focus were the wellsprings, so to speak, of the age. Chili bite springs arose from everywhere, promising a new cure for whatever ailments were consistent with the times. Gone were the constant recommendations for leeches and bloodletting, and health was surrounded by those insisting on natural cures for all. Evolution of built-up areas became a focal point for land developers to hunt for such springs and tributaries. New wealth propagated from the finding of such places. There was an area of Tumid Wells in Kent that is known as the Pantowers, the gold was struck. In an attempt to tear down this good fortune for those involved, that of Lord Dudley North in particular, Burntow's farm declared itself an official rival to the new affluent counterpart. Although such an outrage of people, the farm was attacked in 1738 and the owner, Mr. Thomas Paulwell, killed. It was 1823 before the land was purchased again. In the meantime, the area below the farm was developed extensively and looked upon as a source of Tunbridge Wells' fame. A land developer struck an idea around this time, though. If you can nurture the land around the farm and cultivate the ground, it was possible to create an attraction. The monks were in the spring with the springs of the and not against them. His name was John Ward, and county estate with was the first step from the town trying to compete with the other successful gardens and leisure recreational grounds in the area. He eventually pitted as rival to the spring beauty. The farmhouse extended and developed. The spring was broad of importance to complement the park of 1,000 acres, magnificent stature and bold in design. It's a northern manor and a state of a brave mood for developing and fanciful oriented fresh culture. 1850 brought about an even greater change. A farmhouse or Dunorlan Manor was bought out by a Henry Reed. Reed saw the potential in what he thought he was doing and decided the social and financial sector was right to further that ambition. Structures the way in which natural ground and works were appreciated for changing even further. The development of after dinner straws and walks around the summer's day were getting more prevalent in high society. Reed took the opportunistic stance and this then brought in a rising new architect, Robert Marnock, to supervise this growing vision. Marnock's work was much celebrated in the Great Exhibition of 1862. He took it upon himself to erect a new manor, 
in fine Norman stone of exquisite composition. The building was raided in the, Itali in the Italian style that was popular at the time. Pulling down the old buildings, his strategy was to, ve to develop the lake also, attempting to adapt the water into a picturesque improvisation akin to the painting and landscape type of the day. A reflection of what people wanted to see rather than what was there. This last was indicative of the way in which had the hierarchical body of the population envisaged their surroundings. This view of the world brought about a vertical ceiling between the workers and the elite. This was also reflected in the way luxuriant statues were erected and Grecian temples decorated the landscapes. The water fountain he designed and built used high-quality terracotta. In 1866, he became a great advocate of the plight of the Native Americans in colonial lands and their subjugation in their homeland. The movement gained illuminating popularity and those attending were bowled over by his oratory abilities. A far cry in its philanthropic gesturing from the visions of John Ward. Could the Northern be growing in its aspect? Next time, time on Candy Climbs, I look at the way in which Dunorman Park evolved from a health venture into a spring of leisure and recreation that it is today. I also examine what influence it has had over the country as a whole along the way to its status as a profound influence on the rapidly expanding political prospect of war in the early part of the century. All this before it became a source of hospitality that embodies Tunbridge Wells today. <laughs> way in which natural grounds were appreciated, 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 changing even further the development of... No, maybe not. Fuck. Now stop. Stop. No, no, look, look. Stop. Stop. Oh. Get it, boy.